How's it, bro? How are you doing? Enjoy the rugby. What a weekend or what a Saturday of uh, Curry Cup action. The oldest premier uh, rugby competition in the world. And boy, did it deliver. Hey, probably a couple of Bulls fans that are not too happy. But um, two fantastic games. Great advertisement for local rugby in South Africa. Curry Cup after having lost its sparkle to the other competitions. And I must admit, 22 tries, 157 points scored. <laughs> that is pretty incredible, right? Uh, 12 tries in, in, in the first semifinal, Lions versus the Cheetahs, and then 10 in the Bulls versus the Sharks. So both high-scoring affairs. I expected the Cheetahs to line, and Lions game to be like that, but um, both, both fantastic attacking sides. I must admit, I've always... I've always loved the Cheetahs as the underdog, even in the old days of Super Rugby when they when they were in Super Rugby, they took a beating for so many years and then they had a couple of really good seasons, right? And uh, went to New Zealand and won a few away games and from the way that they played, they won a lot of a lot of fans over. But you know, they always they don't have the resources of, of the other big unions. So I, I love I love the Cheetahs, uh, I must admit. In any case what I would say is this, right? Before I jump in just to, to these games, right? I haven't done a deep dive analysis. I haven't rewatched the games and all of that, right? So this is just from, just from my, my initial view of things. And I'll probably watch them again this week and sneak a little bit of time off work and say, Hey, let's have a little gander at these games, bro. And uh, get fired up again. But I tell you what, right? Is, um, I hear a lot of commentary online from a lot of, journalists and fellow fellow uh, youtubers and stuff that that criticize the box in this this new approach of what they call tony ball and i don't think it is tony ball right i think it's still rusty is the the mastermind behind it and he knows that the game is going to evolve and they can't just play the same way to win uh three world cups in a row isn't that crazy talking about that but um so you know i think it is driven by rusty and it's not just tony ball right um, but in any case, I hear a lot of criticism that South Africa, you got to go back to your strengths, your traditional strengths. You're moving away from it. The players can't play like this. They can't think. Well, I tell you what, you look at schoolboy rugby, you look at the Curry Cup, you look at the Varsity Cup that feeds everything that we do in South Africa. And you see there's a lot of, lot of running rugby. There's a lot of uh, skillful players, even more so now than we've ever had. And despite all the rules and despite all the, the, the strength of the defenses and all the technical analysis before games and defenses have tightened up, there's still a lot of tries being scored. So I think it's a fantastic advertisement for rugby. And I don't buy into the fact that um, the box will struggle to play this expansive game. It's going to take time. Obviously, in the Curry Cup, you have more space. It's a lot looser. The defense is not as tight. But over time, playing uh, those skills, taking them in that high pressure environment over the next two years, three years, four years, right? We might never reach the level of, say, um, the New Zealand All Blacks or France in terms of that's just their in their in their in their genes um, and taught from a very young age. But I think we can definitely. Uh, play an exciting brand of rugby and still win. And I actually thought in the second half of the first um, semi-final, the Lions actually gave a a display when they when they um, when their bench had come on. They actually had big, powerful runners coming around the corner. So they're playing that expansive game, but they were still going up the guts and through the middle, as old uh, the Honey Badger would say um, from from Australia. And really played that power game like, like the box, right? But then we're able to expand a wide and, and still win. So anyway, let's take a look at the game, right? The games. Cheetahs, Lions at Emirates Park. Semi-final number one. Lions win 43 points to 34, six tries apiece. And like I said, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Cheetahs. Limited resources. And they hung in there. They started like a house on fire. And what an exciting, hard tempo game. I mean, you know, if you're a neutral, how can you not enjoy that? Plenty of skills too, right? It wasn't just, you know, throwing cuck all over the place, like direct, very physical, fantastic um, uh, at the breakdown in terms of confrontation and challenging one another, but beautiful, expansive rugby, stepping rugby, 
you know, but also strong ball carries. And, um, you know, what what really impressed me were the cheetah set pieces were phenomenal, 100% scrums, 100% lineouts. I hardly looked like they were going to lose the ball, although they did fumble the ball at the end, which could have given them just put a little bit more pressure on the end, uh, on the lines at the end. I think it was like the 72nd or 73rd minute. If they'd got that, like would have really put a bit of pressure on them. A couple of missed conversions, but you know, it's hard to, in a game like that, right? Just to say, hey, here's the standout player. Although I will say, you know, uh, Sanella Nahamba, when he came on, it was absolutely incredible, right? I think he made like 99 meters in the little time that he was on, a, on, a, on a, as a substitute. So he had these powerful forwards of the line starting to take their toll on, on the cheaters. Um, so, and then you had this exciting stepper come on and just upping the pace. But, uh, I was impressed by him. Always have loved him at the Sharks. I said when the Sharks let him go. And Jared Kens, um, the the number eight. You know, for the Cheetahs, I mean, there's 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 a lot of good players on the lines. But for the Cheetahs, I was really impressed with the with the fly half, uh, uh, Wenzel, Ethan uh, Wenzel, Wenzel, Wenzel. I don't know. Um, scored two tries. Cheetahs went ahead, and I think when he off when he went off, there was a, there was a bit of an impact there for sure, right? Um, Michael uh, Amy's at fullback, and I must admit, Hertzenberger at outside center really like that guy, and also uh, Daniel Cassinetti. Um, you know, Hertzenberg 112 meters and 12 ball carriers, he was the top ball carrier in the team and made the most meters. And uh, Cassende on the wing, number 11, had nine carries, 105 meters. So, so pretty, pretty, pretty incredible, right? So a couple of other things, right, is that second half started off just the way the first half ended. Two quick tries, bang, bang, you know, two heavyweights giving it, giving it horns. Um, and let's, uh, let's appreciate two pretty freaking amazing tries. Well, Sanela Nahamba's, uh, Nahamba's try was fantastic, but uh, Mornay Brandon, how about that guy? He did a triple somersault, dude. He was actually, he was he was better than that Australian break dancer. What's her name? Ray Gun or something. The way he scored that try, he was phenomenal. Um, but what a, what a try from the halfway line! I think it was probably like 51, 52 meters. And Asanefe Noslamba, what is Noslamba Kanye? Right. Uh, what a fantastic. Tribe. The big boy ran straight through. <laughs> the guys were hanging on to him like a, a, a going for a little bit of a bus ride there, speed bump. Um, but yeah, fan fantastic. Absolutely fantastic game. And it's sad for the cheaters. I mean, somebody had to lose, but I think it just came down to the to the bench. And, you know, I, I don't know what it is. They, they fell away a little bit at the end. When I say fall away, that I mean they still scored a try uh, towards the end there. But I think maybe just... A couple of those conversions missed. Uh, could have kept up the pressure on the lines, but hey, bounce of the ball, pass here, whatever. But um, and not as many penalties as the second semi final, which leads us to the Bulls versus the Sharks. So there's probably going to be a lot of sad Bulls supporters. You know, the game ends uh, 40, uh, 40 all, and um, they had to play, of course, for extra time because the scores were leveled at full time, so 10 minutes each way. And um, I thought the Sharks were dead and buried. Twelve players on the team on the on 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 the bloody field versus fifteen uh, before extra time, and the Bulls, to be honest, should have put them away, but couldn't. But uh, I think that speaks a lot. It reminds me the Sharks actually remind me a lot of 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 the box. Right? There was a lot of there's determination. There was a resilience there, and it's like um, we're not going to let this go. Never uh, say die attitude. And those guys like. You know, Lionel Crenier, he's not the most uh, exciting flower, right? He's older, he's got his gray hair, but it's the experience. And I was watching, how calm is this guy? Is this guy panicking now? Not at all. The guy was so calm, they're down to 12 men. And Andre Esterhazen stood up in a big way. And in fact, Esterhazen almost seemed like he was a forward. He was like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting stuck in here myself. So you've got to respect that. But I think the Bulls must think, hey, this is one that got away. 
got away from them big time. There's a lot of mistakes actually from both teams. Both teams had a lot of chances. The Sharks in the first half had a lot of chances to to score in that red zone, didn't capitalize. And at the end of the game, uh, the Bulls, you know, missed a lot of chances. And that was a stage, right, where their scrum started dominating uh, the Sharks and their forward pack, right? The, the Sharks won some scrum penalties in the beginning, which what I thought were, had the ascendancy, and then the game again ebbed and flow. Um, but, and that's why I'm going to give props to to the Sharks front row, um, Nchunu, Fez and Batha. What a game. And I remember, you know, the funny thing is, I still remember Mbatha and Gomere, actually, and Mchunu when they played for the Sharks against the Lions in the Lions Tour, what was that, 2021? And those guys stuck out for me then. I thought, man, these guys are good. And also Jaden Hendricks at the time. And um, and here they are, man. And and they led the charge. But the Sharks, uh, Hanro Jacobs, the the prop who came on uh, towards the end of, of regular time and then came on again at, at, at uh, extra time, I mean, he must have been exhausted, but he 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 was the rock. Without him coming back on, the Sharks have been out that game, I think, right? Ethan Hooker had a good game out of position, right? You can't criticize the guy. Made a couple of mistakes in the first half, a little bit out of position. First time he's played wing, but that guy's exciting. He's big, he's strong, and he's fast, right? So exciting for, for the Springboks. He was already part of the, the greatest Springbok team, so hopefully he gets a chance again. Uh, Esther Hazen was good, and actually, really, I thought Jordan Hendricks uh, was good at 15. I don't know what his plans are uh, um, or the coach's plans for Hendricks. Uh, is he going to stay at 15? You know, the box uh, uh, chose him at uh, selected him at, at 10. He didn't have the greatest game there, but hey, knew his kid. It's okay. He's, and so I actually thought he was good. And Edwin Cater from the Grick, Grick was, uh, I thought he was phenomenal, supremely physical gets stuck in and he's deceptively quick. And then for the Bulls, right, I thought um, Stravino Jacobs, man, that guy's like a tank. Uh, very difficult to stop. And, of course, Cameron Hanukom, right, I think, you know, he's in that superstar, sort of really exciting player, kind of um, Sasha Feinberg sort of a league, right? Um, don't know if he is as much of a superstar as Sasha, but the only thing about uh, Hanakom, unfortunately, the poor guy is uh, he gets a lot of injuries. So he he got taken off, um, you know, with the HIA assess assessment, I think, and then he took another bang, right? And uh, David Creel was good. Uh, Letabele was good. Gumere was good. Kubis Visa was good, uh, I thought, and Marcel Kutsia. The interesting thing, though, for where, where the Lions and the Cheetahs, they had standout players in terms of ball carriers, uh, and meters made for the Bills. You see, it's almost it's almost the same all across. So there wasn't like one person that was really sticking out um, in in that uh, in that game, apart from guys like uh, um, Stravino Jacobs and David Creel. Right, they got to double figures, almost dub double figures in in ball carries, but they mo made the most meters. Right, so like one hundred and ten and. Uh, 103 meters or 105 meters or something like that. Whereas um, for the Sharks, they had their ball carriers. James Fenter won uh, man of the match, but then they have, um, you know, Ethan Hooker uh, made a lot of uh, meters, a lot of ball carries too. And then it was Esther Hazen, it was Edwin Cater. Uh, these guys are getting like double figure ball carriers and then Jordan Hendricks. But Ethan Hooker, I think like 169 meters, um, Edwin Cates is like 140, sorry, that was Esther Hazen, 140, 144. Uh, Cater did like close to 160. And then Jordan Hendricks uh, um, also um, around about 140 or something like that. So again, it was just a phenomenal semi-final. Very, very tense, very exciting at the end. And for those of you guys who are passionate fans, fans you probably thought, hey, geez, this weekend I'm going to relax because the box on playing, I'm not going to have heart failure. I don't have to have the defibrillator there close to me. But if you are one of those fans, I mean, I'm a Sharks fan, but I sort of, um, I'm not crazy, crazy, like don't get stressed out about it, right? So given what's happened over the years. But um, yeah, man, I just love all the South African teams. I'm just stoked that we had such great uh, semi-finals. So next week, next Saturday, the 21st, 
Sharks are traveling up to the Lions in Emirates Park. And uh, we'll have to see, can the Sharks recover uh, after such uh, a, a emotional win? But, hey, I forgot to say, I forgot to say, right? I spoke about uh, um, the tries from the Lions players, but what about that damn try from Trevor uh, in your corner, right? I actually thought he, he was a bit injured when he came on, but then uh, what, a, what a finish at the end. So happy for the big boy. He did his little dance at the end. So sorry for the Bills supporters. I mean, that's heartbreaking. You finish 40, 40 each a piece, but the Sharks win because they scored six tries versus the Bills four tries in that game. And like I said, on to the, to the final next week. And let's see, can the Sharks recover? The, the Lions will be on a high. They'll be confident. And uh, it's going to be a cracker of a game. And, uh, you know, again, just happy that the Curry Cup got its uh, got some really good games in the semi-final. Great advertisement for South African rugby. And there's definitely a great buzz around South African rugby at the moment, that's for sure. So with all that being said, I want to say thanks so much. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you guys to subscribe and you know, leave your comments and give me your input. Who do you think is going to win? What did you think of the semifinals? And uh, remember, we don't want to get uh, too crazy in the comments. We don't want to get too negative. We don't want to be a doist, right? Keep it clean. Keep it fun. Keep it engaging. I want to hear what you guys think. I want to hear what you guys thought about uh, the players, who's good, who's not. And uh, enjoy your weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Cheers.